Hello my friends, DIYs by Dar, we're going to do pottery today. Here is how the clay comes in a 25 pound block. I've had this clay for a while and I ran some water down the side of it to kind of loosen it up a bit and I'm going to go ahead and cut it and see what we've got here. And it's a, a little bit dry but it should be okay. You can see how it's cracking there. It still feels pretty good. So I'm going to cut four pieces with a just a wire that you can easily cut through it and these pieces are about an inch in thickness and I'll wrap up the rest and put it away for later. This is the fun part when you have the clay this way because it's been through a big pug mill and there's no air in it. So you're going to go ahead and lay them pieces out on your canvas and uh, start to kind of mesh them together. Push, push one section over the other and mesh them all together. And we're gonna end up with a very large piece of clay, which I always say is my canvas that I work on. I'm gonna flip it over and get the other side. Press that all together. And then I'm gonna get the other canvas and put it over the top. You want that canvas lined up, we're going to put it through that slab roller. And the settings are a quarter of an inch, a little bit thicker. Start that canvas coming through because you're going to need it to start coming through when it's that thick. Pull it through just a little bit to get it going. And then once it, it catches and you'll feel it hit that clay, then you're able to use both hands and really crank it through. It takes a little bit of muscle when you have the clay that thick to get it through. Just make sure it's not getting hung up and just keep turning it. This is a slab roller, North Star slab roller. It's probably 20 some years old. So there we have a very beautiful piece of clay. And you're gonna go ahead and take a piece of nice material, kind of like t-shirt material, because we want to get rid of the uh, indentations or the pattern that's left in the clay from the canvas itself. It leaves little patterns in it and you want it smooth because we're going to put some plants in there and press it in and you want it to be nice and smooth. So make sure you don't have any bubbles in it, no debris in it. Take that rolling pin and that's the best way that I found to do that. Just get yourself an old rolling pin and get that stuff out. I always cut the ends off around it um, so it's easier to, to cut and move. And peel it off that canvas because it will stick on there a little bit. And since this piece is so large, I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece off and we'll save that for a little bit later. And always sand off or wipe off your rolling pin because if you have any debris on it that debris is going to stick in your nice clean surface you want it nice and clean we're going to cover it up because i'm going to go on a journey and i'm going to go find some plants to press in here so we're taking off from my yard and there's my little greenhouse where I started my plants this year. I'm going to take off on this little dirt road and take a little turn on it and I am searching for some oak, little oak bushes or little oak seedlings that are coming up in some of the brush area and looking for the top portion of them. So we'll get to that spot shortly here. There they are, these little things here. Those are the new growth, they're tiny. They have a lot of definition in the back of them and they're great to press. They really leave great impressions. 
that one there was kind of eaten up by bugs, so I didn't take it. I got a few, but not not as much as I wanted. You can see there's really slim pickings out here. Um, so I'm going to have to really find another area where maybe some new trees are growing. Here are all of my leaves, and I am going to get ready to lay them down into this canvas. I like this one. I'm going to keep it together. Sometimes that's neat. And it takes a little bit of work to lay these out because you have to get them in a direction so one's not laying on top of the other and spread them out and still try to make it look natural. And what I use is a, I believe this is a pastry uh, roller, but going slowly through and straightening the leaves out on which way I want them to go Make sure there's no debris on there because once you get debris on there, your surface, it's going to stay there. Just roll it out. And give it a good overall roll so it's really down in that clay good. Now, since this is free form, I'm going to go ahead and just cut this clay any way I want, whatever I'm in the mood for. I use those extra pieces that I'm throwing to the side. That's what I use when I make my pendants. Take those and I roll them out a little bit thinner and that is what um, I use for my pendant making materials. Sometimes you might not like your shape. You can always tweak it around a bit. Already, I'm ready to put it inside a bowl. So, flip number one, and then roll off that canvas slowly, because that's gonna stick a bit. And then put another piece of material on the back, and it's gonna be flip number two. Now, this is some light kind of material on the back, like T-shirt and it's very flexible and it moves a lot. And we're gonna set it inside this white bowl so it kind of turns up around the edges. It'll be flat on the bottom, but turn up on the edges. So you can see I have it set in there. And when you're gonna press that, you just press lightly because you don't wanna leave indentations in the top of your clay. So this is a very delicate job and a, li a light touch going around and patting in the bottom and then kind of curling up around the sides and we're going to let it dry. So here, here's a piece of the leftover clay and I'm taking some of the smaller leaves and I set them down on the clay and sometimes I don't know what shape I'm going to cut it out into until I actually have the leaves on the clay because I never know what type of design I'm going to end up with. And then I have to kind of play around with those cutters to see which one I can use to actually cut the form out. Now here, using a round one, um, and sometimes they don't always come out, and I was lucky I could grab that one and pick it up. But if you can't get them out, you just have to leave them stuck on your canvas until you're done and then you can pull uh, the whole piece up and then that one will stay down. Really cool little leaf here. It, it was uh, very characteristic on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can make a pendant out of it. You know, see it too big. I tried to turn it that way, it wouldn't work, but I could cut it this way. It would work if I cut it that way. That's what I mean, you pull, pull the clay up around and 
Um, unfortunately, this one was way too thin. I couldn't really use it, but I'm going to peel that leaf off and show you what that looks like, like right away once it's stuck in the clay. Um, so pretty neat. And I'm going to use this leaf over again because it didn't break and it really has a nice characteristic look to it. So I'm going to go ahead and use it in uh, one of my other designs here. So here is that other piece that I had and roll it out again and cut the edges off around it so it's easier to pick up and to move because when you have it kind of smashed down on the end it's more difficult to try to pick up off of that canvas if it's cut you can pick it up easier and once again here's where you're going to be that artist you lay that leaves selection out the way that looks the best to you the most natural to you, the most artistic to you. And sometimes you have to roll a little bit of it down to hold it in place and use a little tool to move the leaves ever so slightly so it looks good and then give it one overall good roll. Here comes that leaf that I didn't want to throw away. I, I used it in this one because I really like that leaf. And we're going to cut it once again um, to the, the shape that looks possibly the best for the setup of the leaves that you have on it. I should have stopped there, but for some wacky reason, I just at the moment wanted to cut a little bit more and I should have just left it there. thought about it too long, I guess. But they're freeform, so it doesn't matter. Here's our first flip. And you're going to roll that canvas off. And we need to find a piece of material and flip it back over because I'm going to put this one inside of a, a bowl again to get the shape flat on the bottom and up at the outside edges. And get it inside that bowl and straighten out that piece of material so you've got it where you want it, where you want that flat portion of that bowl to be that you're making and where you want those sides to come up and just place it in there where you want. Press it down ever so slightly. Don't leave your fingerprints in there. We'll set this one aside until we uh, get to the point that that clay is at what we call a leather hard stage. Then it's a lot easier to move. Here's one last little bundle I liked and I thought that I could probably just make a quick little round whatnot dish here. And the clay's starting to get um, a little bit firmer at this point so I'm gonna go ahead and try to give it a nice little shape cut it to how you want it I'm going to use a plaster hump mold and this is just a big round hump of plaster. You can see I, I was just able to peel that piece off of there because it's starting to get pretty dry and it's not a real large piece. So I could just pick it right up off the canvas without really distorting it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and slowly 
press it down around that hump mold. So it's just going to be a nice little round bowl. And set that aside until that gets dry enough. Now the pieces we made are dry enough. I can pick them up through at leather hard stage. I need to get the holes in these. Um, so I have a couple just round hole punchers and putting the hole in, real, the size really depends on how I ended up with the, de the design on the piece where the flowers or leaves actually are. And the how big I make the hole also depends on where um, I put that hole. Like this one, I'm gonna put a large hole right up in that top corner and it'll be kind of a side angle pendant and I'll be able to put maybe a heavier cord through that one. So um, you can just uh, always go through and check a little bit and make sure any real big pieces or chunks are off of there. But we're going to get another chance to take care of that in the next section. So this piece is dry enough that I can take it off of that hump mold now. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and by feeling it, I can tell and press it down one more time. And it's a little bit rocky. You can see that. So you're going to simply press it down flat in the area that looks the best to you. You don't want to completely flatten it out, but press down to where that little bowl is going to sit really nice and even for yourself. You can do it on the canvas or um, do it on your workbench, but just press it down so it's nice and flat. If you have a lot of debris or really odd angular cuts, you can always take a wet sponge at this point and go around the outside edge and smooth it out. But this one was pretty hard. Um, so I'm going to have to probably wait now until it's completely dry and then just sand it with some of my sanding sponges to make that more uniform around the outside edge of it. Make sure you don't have any debris on it and it's, it's ready um, to go on the drying rack and the rack I have, um, it's just a, a shelf that you can dry from both sides. Here's one that's dry and you can see the different leaves and the configuration that I put them in and another freeform cut. And here's another one that was a triangle and it's a little more flat, but just kind of comes up on the edges. And once again, just some dried mud. And you can see the different configuration that I put the leaves in. More like they're kind of falling down, trickling down. You can take the leaves out, but don't ever sacrifice your design for trying to get the leaf out because these are going to burn out in the kiln and there isn't going to be anything left. But if you get too many um, pieces in there that all the leaves and the flowers are left in there, it, it can make a lot of soot inside your kiln. Usually I, I do try to vacuum my kiln out the very first part of the year when I start firing again. And if I have a lot of heavy debris, that's going to be flying around in there. And basically it's just like little black soot. And when it becomes a problem is if you don't keep your kiln clean, that is going to fly around in there when you go, go to put your glaze on and might land on your glazed piece. And depending on where it lands, and it's going to land on the surface of it, the part that you're looking at, you can ruin it. And that's just what it looks like before it's fired. You can see the nice little impressions in there that the leaf itself will leave. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pick all these back up and put them in a safe place because they're very fragile at this point. Those two are much more fragile than what this one is right now because that one is still at um, leather stage.
firing 1888 to 1940 degrees on that first fire to take it uh, to that bisque stage. All right, I'm ready to go ahead and take this bowl out. Um, it's kind of almost to leather stage, but I'm pushing it a little bit, so I'm going to set it out. And you can see how the corners stay up on their own from sitting inside that bowl. And at this point, I mean, you can still manipulate the clay a bit. Like I can still point those ends up a little bit more if I want them. And then uh, prop something up on the back of that if I want that to come up a little bit more. But I'm just going to leave this one a little bit flatter. If there's any ends, of course, that are going to be a problem that are not going to be easy for you to sand off when it gets to its completely dry stage, then uh, you can take a sponge and you can wipe them down. Part two, I'm going to show you how to clean the pieces, putting them in the kiln, the kiln setup, and firing these to the bisque stage. And here are just some finished pieces for you. Thanks for watching and like and subscribe. I need some more subscribers to keep me going on this channel. I really want to thank you for taking the time to watch, like and subscribe.